Okay, you see a few other things up here. I showed you these guys, but I'm going to show you a couple other things. Not, not, not so much to have, but just what I have and etc. This is cast iron. You can tell just by how I'm hefting it. It's got some weight to it. This is a 10 inch. It was my mother's. So it's been around a while. And it's got a fair decent seasoning in it as well. I need to wipe it real quick. The one problem to, ca uh, to cast iron and um, carbon steel pans on a pot rack is if you don't wipe it out well enough, you can have what I just what I've just discovered was a little bit of an oily, and it will drip down onto whatever is below. Anyhow, this not necessarily for you to start out with, but it's something to look into when you get older or uh, have more experience <coughs> have more experience in and you're cooking and you feel like wanting to give one of these a try they're great great for for steering steaks they're great for bacon things of that nature this little guy is the pot that belongs to a set of egg poacher. This is a vintage one. I have a small, a single one as well. There's little cups that fit in here. I don't really use this because I use the one and a half quart for that, and I just put water in it. Let it come to a full rolling boil. Leave it in a rolling boil, and then drop in my eggs, which I have drained in a in a little sieve. Something very similar to this type of thing and what it does is it, if there's any water it'll drain through and then you put that into a bowl and then you pour it into your water which is kept at a rolling boil and the water will agitate and cause the whites to clump together and coagulate and that's how you cook your uh, your soft boiled eggs and you only need to leave them in the water for like 30 seconds to a minute if you want soft if you want uh, runny yolks so there's that i have a little one this is a cheapie that i picked up for like eight bucks at um, grocery outlet and it's a little too rough on the inside but it gets the job done and it's pre-seasoned and I find it works great if you just need to do a single hamburger and it's too cold and wet to do it on the grill. This is a griddle pan. I'm not a real huge fan of these. So I may get rid of it and it doesn't really clean up that great but it was given to me by my mother. She got it from something I forget now and she didn't need it or want it and the two yellow skillets in the back are vintage Lake Corsay skillets from the 50s they came as part of a set this yellow pot was part of it as well as I have a yellow um, right down there it's a uh, Dutch oven they all came from the same set and they came from the same estate sale uh, about 30 years ago and I was able to figure out the yellow actually dates back to the 50s they had turquoise in that color and I think the turquoise is from the same period and there may have been other there I'm sure there are other colors but for right now uh, oh right So that's the rest of the stuff that's in my pot rack. What you see here on this shelf are, are all the accessories and things like the blades and stuff to go to food processors and stuff of that nature. This is where I keep my coffee grinders. Now, if you're going to be grinding your beans, whole coffee beans, something like this, 
the Krups makes a, a modern day version of it. Braun may still do as well. But the, these are what are known as burr grinders. They're just simple blade grinders and they aren't the most precise, but they get the job done and they will grind your coffee beans. Now, if you want to grind your spices, you will need a second one. And I have this red one that you can see right there. The red one um, is my spice grinder. You don't want to be using the same spice grinder for both coffee and, and beans because the oils in your coffee will mix in with the oils of your spices. And I don't think you want that. And this, oh, one, one thing that is, I would also recommend is some kind of a grater, a box grater. This is a form of it, but typically a box grater is, is exactly what it, it says. It's a vertical box with an open bottom, usually. And you have this, this, on all four sides, different things like this on one side, this will be on one side, this will be on one side, and this on another side. And then you just scrape away onto your cutting board, onto wax paper on your counter or something of that nature. And then you just figure it out what, how, many you, how much you need. But this set is, I think, made in Germany. However, I picked it up at um, TJ Maxx about 30 years ago. And this is the vintage one, which I use quite often. And I also have a Xylus, which has the insert. It's this, basically. And you just put your cheese in here, close that and you squeeze and you, you rotate. I use it a fair amount. It's a decent gr um, cheese grater. Anyhow, that's graters, and I would recommend you get something, a, a box grater of some sort for grating cheese. Um, like Parmesan or anything of that nature and you can get them for inexpensively and that's what I would recommend to have to start with because you're going to be needing to grate certain things like um, grating uh, zucchini if you're going to make zucchini bread or anything of that nature so there's only a couple of things here that I would recommend and the, everything else is optional um, and you can pick those up as you go along. I would recommend a couple of bowls nearby, mixing bowls. These are stainless steel and they're great for just everyday use. Great for putting flour in if you're going to be making um, pizza dough. And something this size is great for salting and oiling your vegetables that you've cut for a sheet pan dinner or for roasting or for whatever you're going to be doing because you can go like this and move things around or use a, a spatula and you can toss things really well and not have them fall out. These are not expensive. I picked this up at Cash and Carry. It's now um, the chef store but it's made by Winco and it was like eight bucks something like that. So they're not expensive and they're great for this kind of thing. These two are uh, made by Revereware and they're a little heavier, but they're made for the home. And because Revereware unfortunately um, no longer exists, this pot, by the way, is also made by Revereware. And again, like these bowls, you can't buy these anymore. Because Revereware went out of business, I want to say 15, 20 years ago. And it did so through trying to use um, multiply uh, cookware, 
only to have it fail and because they didn't have the people who really knew how to do it and do it well and as a result they apparently went out of business because of it but I would recommend uh, bowls like these for tossing this little one really needs to I need to wash it but I've been gathering t tomatoes with it so I'll just leave it over on the table okay casseroles small casseroles like these like this little one it's great for a single chicken breast um, chicken thighs or something of that nature and something this size is for two maybe but something small like this would be great for roasting in, a, in an oven I would also recommend you get yourself some uh, sheet pans like these I have three of these these are 9 by 13 um, sheet pans as you can see the rim baking sheets basically and they're great for cooking making cookies on um, anything of that nature roasting sheet pan meals on these this is oftentimes what I use them for but uh, yeah two or three of them should be, give you give you plenty of these and they're not terribly expensive and like I said you can pick these up at restaurant supply houses you can get um, in various places but restaurant supply houses definitely have them I would also recommend you get some sort of a cooling rack like this one or the the individual square ones <clears throat> the reason is when you need when you're doing something that is frying and you want to keep it crisp you can put it on here and let it air circulate around and not sitting in the oil so the bottom sides stay crisp but you can also use them for putting cookies on so that they can dry they can cool once they're off the pan and so these are, are great if you're going to be doing any baking um, and that's something that you can maybe pick up not right away but something you can pick up as you go along I'm just going to show you this real quick you may find that if you're renting you may find one of these left in the apartment you may be given one um, and if you get a new stove you'll get often get one of these with the stove it's a roasting pan or broiler pan It's the top part and then the bottom the bottom part catches all the grease and the top part allows you to put your steaks on or whatever and the grease will fall through and it's a great way to cook fairly healthily so you may find you run into these and these can come in handy for a lot of things even when you're still learning how to how to cook just by turning on the broiler and they're perfect for that okay um, casseroles you will want you will want something like these this is the vintage copa steel um, casserole lasagna pan they're great for casseroles of all kinds so you don't have to make lasagna exclusively in them but that's what they are here is an inexpensive um, milk glass one made by Corning Corning no longer is in existence but Pyrex still makes versions of these in clear 
and they're inexpensive and they're readily available. This is um, one I picked up at Fred Meyer a couple, uh, several years, several, about five or six years ago, I think. Anyhow, it, um, it's a little larger than I want, so I don't use it that often. But it's great for making casseroles and things that you need to take, you know, a large batch of, say, for Thanksgiving. And these are dusty just because they haven't been used in recent months. And the uh, outlet for the furnace is right behind this on the, the back walls. That right there. Okay, for things like, if you're going to be making things like gingerbread, I would almost, I would recommend an 8x8 or 9x9 cake pan for that purpose. If you plan on making any muffins, I would recommend you get some muffin tins like these. You can, these are the actual muffin tins. The smaller ones are for cupcakes. You can make mini cupcakes, but these are also for cupcakes as well. For pies, an inexpensive wherever aluminum pie pan works for that kind of thing. And you put your pie crust in here and par bake it and then fill it and then you know put a topping on it, whatever you're going to use. Just inexpensive, and you can use it for all kinds of things. You can use it for dipping your chicken in. Or flour in, in the flour and if you have a couple of these you can have one for flour one for your eggs and one for say your breadcrumbs if you're doing something like chicken uh, parmesan loaf pans great to have and if you're going to be planning on doing any kind of quick breads like banana bread or um, zucchini bread these are great for that kind of thing. Again, inexpensive. You can buy them in a lot of places. This is the vintage one. But something like this, um, Good Cooks brand, you can get at local stores. It's just fine. I need to clean up this area. I would recommend, if you want to take advantage of some of the recipes that are out there, a good crock pot or Instapot would be a good thing to get. You may not find you need it right away, but you, it's something to think about within, your, with, within a, a short period of time, possibly. Because um, you can make your recipe up the night before with crock pots, you can the the pot can be t uh, stored in the refrigerator with the lid on it, and then when you get ready to go to work, just drop this in, turn it on, and it's ready when you come home from work. And you just have to, if you're making like spaghetti sauce, all you have to do is cook the pasta, make a salad, and you're got dinner the next day. I would recommend you get a. Uh, Salad spinner, like this. This one I picked up at um, TJ Maxx, but it's made by Xylus. But any salad spinner is great because you can use it to dry things like wash your spinach, put it in here and give it a good spin and it'll be dry and ready to saute. And it's great for lettuce, it's great for any other leafy greens that you want to use. And it's one of the best things. Oxo makes a good one, and they're not that expensive, they're like 30 bucks.
for large cooking, I would recommend for soups and things, a covered Dutch oven will come in handy. You don't need to buy a Le Creuset one, but you can get a, an inexpensive ca uh, enameled cast iron one for not too much, 50 bucks, 100 bucks at most. And they'll do you a world of good for that kind of thing. Because you can put things on low and then just let it cook for a good couple hours. But something like this, a three quart would be great for smaller batches of stuff. A five to five and a half quart would be good for everything else. They make them larger than that. But for starting out, a five quart is great, just plenty. I would recommend you get yourself, if you're planning on doing any kind of stock making, get yourself a stock pot. What's great about these, you can put your bones in here, your aromatics, which is things like um, celery, carrots, onion, and then um, your bouquet garni, and you just sit on the back burner and just let it burble away for two or three or four or five hours and you have stock. Now I used to, this was adequate enough in the early days but I'm finding that in recent years that I fill this pot up to the rivets and I decided to get a bigger pot this year so I have a 16 quart. That way I can make a bunch of sauce or a stock and then freeze it but that's only if you're planning on making stock of your own then I would recommend a stock pot of some sort and that's where the 16 inch long handled spoons will come in handy something I would recommend and you don't have to spend anything really big you can just get yourself one of these batter bowls from the Dollar Tree they literally are about a buck or something like this. These aren't very, very expensive. And the same thing, they're melamine. It's what I call the scrap bowl. You can put all your food scraps in here and then either compost it or put it in the food waste can to be composted by the city. It just depends on where you are and what your capabilities are. If you're going to be growing your own food, then you can uh, make your own compost just by taking this and just tossing it in. Compost is really nothing more than browns and greens. You put a layer of brown and you put a layer of green. Layer of brown, layer of green, and you toss every so often. And eventually you'll have broken down matter that's loamy, dirt-like matter that's full of nutrients, and you incorporate that into your soil into your plants, for your plants. It's the way to, to grow things organically. This is just another um, colander that I picked up and I, it, when I need a bigger one, this is, this is fine. But I almost never use it. But I still think it's kind of cool. I would also recommend a mixing bowl set of set of three to four bowls minimum and they're great for putting things like beans in here and then throwing them in the microwave to nuke to heat up or for putting the spent shells from crab or anything like that and for mixing. This set I can throw in the dishwasher and I've had it since the 80s and this was like one of the last of this set. You can still get the same style bowls, they're just in clear now. I 
I would recommend you get yourself some uh, flatware or dishes and for mise en place just start picking up random bowls they don't, they don't need to be anything really big something this size is gracious plenty or if you're going to be serving things like um, ice cream or um, fruit something about this size would be, be for, perfect for dinner or for condiments dipping sauces these are perfect these are vintage but you can get new ones that are about this size and of course dishes meaning big plates small plates and cereal bowls at minimum everything else that you see in here I would also recommend you look into one of these for things like um, pancake batters, uh, waffles, things of that nature. Serving bowls like this. This is the divided one and I almost never use it, but it's still it's vintage um, Harkerware. I would recommend a good salad bowl for serving your salad in. Um, things of that nature but bowls of various sizes great for that kind of thing small stuff like this uh, great for like spices herbs and anything where you're just needing a few t a couple of tablespoons of something these various type of plates this is actually a, a compote bowl it's, you put your fruit in that and then you serve it that way but these are very similar and I have a, a saucer that is not what I was thinking it is, but it serves the same purpose. It's supposed to have a cup on it. And um, all of these are made for things like mise en place. What mise en place is, is basically things where you, uh, things have their place and, their, and the place has their thing. Basically, <clears throat> when you're cooking, you want to have everything, for things like uh, wok cooking, everything needs to be chopped and in bowls, ready to go, and in the order you want them, because when you're cooking in a wok, you're cooking quickly, and you need to be able to pour one ingredient in, set the bowl aside, stir that for a second or two, pour the next ingredient in, so on and so forth, and you need to do it quickly because stuff will burn because you, when you're cooking with a wok which is a cast iron shallow but wide pan cooking at very very high heat will um, easily burn anyhow that's the bare minimum um, oh you would need flatware things that are in the baking realm Flatware, just you know, standard. Steak knives are nice to have, but not necessarily necessary because a lot of these work just as well. These are butter spreaders for dinner. This is when they call this a pastry cutter. It's when you're putting your butter in, you're cutting the butter into your flour and dry ingredients. Butter or shortening. Discs for the food processor, not necessary at this point, but I would recommend serving things like um, pie server, a gravy ladle, slot spoon for anything that, like beans that might be in uh, liquid, a regular serving spoon. Pretty much the rest of these are for the most part optional. This is tongs for um, fondue cooking um, salad tongs salad servers which for if you're going to be serving salad in a big bowl you need a set of these This is the drawer for baking. 
And the things minimum that I would recommend are some, this is the lemon reamer, but measuring cups come in handy. Um, liquid measuring cups. This is a one cup. This is a vintage Pyrex one cup. This is also a one cup and I have a two cup. They're all made by Pyrex. This is just another set of these. Everything else is pretty much optional and back here if you're going to do anything where you need to roll out there's a rolling pin would come in handy. And then there's all of your other salad tongs. That drawer is things like um, storage bags, freezer bags, wax paper, stuff of that nature. Everything here is more or less optional other than a serving platter might come in handy. So that's pretty much what you would need to start with and you can always build onto it like the food processor. You can add that later as you gain skills and more confidence and you see oh it would be really nice to be able to grate that block of uh, Parmesan cheese. That's perfect for that and I've got all the discs for it. Anyhow that's what you need. Now the next step is knowing the basic steps of cooking. The basic steps of cooking are things like uh, basic breakdowns actually are things like the braise, the saute, frying, boiling, roasting, baking, and broiling, and of course grilling, be it the open flame, charcoal, or gas. And of course, finally, the griddle. The griddle is just a flat surface. You can use it to make smash burgers. You can use it for um, making bigger batches of pancakes instead of using your skillet kind of thing. And all these different elements of cooking, when combined together, make your dish. So if you're making like a pasta dish, you might need to saute some vegetables. Um, you might need to boil some pasta. You will need to boil some pasta actually. And grind the meat and brown that. Those kinds of things are necessary to make your pasta dish. And once you combine them all together, you have yourself a dish. It's very simple to do, but just those elements, some things like your vegetables you want to roast before you add it to the main dish. So all of these different elements are common to almost every culture. China is the only culture that does things a little differently because of the, uh, the scarcity of cooking fuel. Let me pull it out here. This is what I was talking about, the wok. It is made for extremely high heat cooking where you drizzle the oil around the outside so it doesn't cool down the wok. You put in your bite-sized pieces of food, your strips of meat or whatever, and you toss in extreme high heat with this guy. You can also steam with steamer baskets and you can also deep fry and it's all done in here but everything is made to be cooked quickly in better seconds and within about 15-20 minutes you have a dinner that's piping hot ready to go and your rice which is the only thing that will take a while to cook because you have to boil it but ultimately That's, they do that for, to conserve the, f the cooking fuel and it was developed 
eons ago, millennia ago, and it's really the the only exception. Everything else uses much the same tools that we use today here in, in the U.S., but they just make some minor changes along the way to make changes to their food. Anyhow, that's, but as I said, you can always add more. This, what I've shown you here are the things I would highly recommend for starting out the basics. A pot or two, a skillet or two, um, three or four utensils, a cutting board, some dishes, flatware, glassware, and that's and some cooking utensils, three or four cooking utensils, and that's really what you need to start. Once you start picking up the basic elements of cooking and everything else that goes with it, you can add more things to it as you move along. Ultimately, as I said, I started picking up stuff as I planned for the eventual moving out of my parents' house, and I continued to add to the kitchen. This is how I've been able to stock my kitchen as much as I have, and it takes time. But also, learning to cook, I learned through osmosis by watching um, chefs like Julia Child, um, Jeff Smith, Lydia Bastianich, uh, Marianne Esposito for her show um, Ciao Italia, much of it PBS. But there are other cooks and, and shows and I also observe through my mother. And that was how I, I learned to set up my kitchen. It was seeing how she set up her kitchen and why it was done that way. And I've heard other people say this much the same thing. As much as possible, you're not always going to be able to get everything ideal because storage space and where it is. But you do your best, the best you can. And so that's how I learned. And that's how why it, you see this kitchen be kind of like what it is. Unlike a restaurant kitchen in that things are in the open where I can just grab and go and not have to duck around doors to open to get something to duck around the doors to close it again etc I just reach up grab what I need and go anyhow that's what I would recommend and further uh, videos are going to be about the basics of cooking as far as Okay, we're going to broil today. Here's how you broil. We're going to boil today. This is how you boil, etc. and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you on the next video. So, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified. It'll do this channel a world of good, and I'll see you on the next video.